jewelry, a person needs no introduction, indicative of social rank, relationship status, interests and beliefs, jewelry is sometimes endearingly called a woman's best friend, or maybe even a man's. I'm Cesc Oreña Drilon. Join me as we discover the transformative power of jewelry with top-notch jewelry designer, Erika Concepcion Reyes, owner and founder of Riqueza Vintage and Fine Jewelry. Only here in Usapang Billionario. Oops, there. perfect. Yes. Baka hindi ko na to alisin. Yeah. <laughs> I've always an old soul. So I've always, in terms of music, in terms of even my taste in um, things, fashion, I've always liked 1950s. I've always liked vintage. Uh, so even in my jewelry. The pieces that I carry are actually reproductions based on pre-colonial jewelry pieces. Mm -hmm. and so the designs are? Are based on... Um, actual pre-colonial jewelry pieces but they what I sell are reproductions and are made in-house by my workers. Mm -hmm. I remember in an interview with Joey mm -hmm. he said that Joe Con was very kuripot. He understood the value of money so he was not wasteful he was not extravagant mm -hmm. he was not um, he's very he was very mindful mm -hmm. of what he would spend his money on so he encouraged all of us to even at a young age mm -hmm to start a business mm. so even like even selling you know like when you're seven years old i was seven years old you're selling i was selling like friendship bracelets you mga ganyan. Ah. You know, I'm going to let you in on one of Manila's best kept secrets. And the lady of the house is here. This is her atelier. This is Erica Concepcion Reyes. Obviously, she's a jeweler because you can see that in this painting, the most striking thing, aside from the beauty of her face, of course, is this beautiful piece that she's wearing. So this is her atelier. It is Riqueza Jewelry, which is Spanish for riches. So let's see if we're going to meet the lady of the house. Oh, Erica, you're there! Hi, In Seth. the flesh, not just in the painting. Hi, Did Seth. I say your jewelry? Yes, right? yes, Riqueza, that's yeah. correct. Thank yes. you for inviting of course, us. Of I'm so happy to have you here. My first time, talagang, ano, you, I was just telling everybody here that they're, I'm letting them in on Manila's best kept secret. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, welcome to my shop. It's Thank really like you. an extension of my home. It is. Yes. It feels very homey, parang intimate. Yes. It's like you're entering um, a salon of a yes. very stylish, tasteful oh, thank you. <laughs> woman. So, Erica, I came without any adornment because I want to know how you will, of course. you know. Yes, let's uh, pick out something. Put some jewelry on let's me. Let's pick out something for you. Thanks! Makatikim man lang ako for a few hours. <laughs> I okay. know that you're a fan of pre-colonial jewelry because of Vil Ramon, Ramon Villegas. Villegas. Yes. Yeah, He's you're... actually the one who got me into oh. this jewelry business. Oh. So he would design my personal pieces. Okay. That's when I first met him about 15 years ago or more. And then he encouraged me because I really love jewelry. He encouraged me to make it into a business. Wow. Yes. Yeah, so that's so you'll see actually there are a lot of pieces, for example, like these that are very much inspired by uh, the things that I learned from him mm -hmm. because... So this is pre-Spanish, yes, no? Yes, correct. So people think that, don't maybe not too many people know that we already had a treasure yes, of exactly. uh, gold. Yes, yeah. exactly. 
Ayan, so siguro bagay yan sa suot ko. Kasi yes, medyo I think Filipiniana. this. I think these earrings would look great. Exactly what I was looking at. <laughs> and for a like a cuff, maybe this one. They must have been very skilled, no? The makers of this, be, even before the Spanish. Yes. Because they had to achieve this. Exactly. Very and they thin... would be able to make it without. They didn't have machines. They didn't mm. have. It was really by hand and with yeah. very simple uh, tools. Exactly. So. Oops, there. perfect. Yes. Baka hindi ko na to alisin. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that looks great on you. We can try the earrings here. I think these would look great with your top. What do you think? It's very nice. It's very striking. Thank you. Right? So tell us, how did you get into jewelry? So I got into jewelry because of my mentor, uh, Ramon Villegas. So I would go to him for my personal pieces. Mm -hmm. uh, he would, uh, jewelry that was handed down to me, he, I would go to him, he would restore them, clean them, because he's the expert when it mm. comes to handling how, antique how pieces. How did you know about him? I, in the first he place? was very close to my husband, Francis Reyes, because he was already working on pieces for my mother-in-law. Mm. Yes, yeah, so Francis and I were not married yet. Mm. We were still dating, mm. and he introduced me to Ramon, mm. and we really hit it off. Like, mm. he was my lunch companion almost every day. We would go to Milky Way, and we would, uh, yes, so we would have... Uh, lunch together and then we would uh, talk jewelry because we liked the same things even in terms of the periods of jewelry that we would uh, we like so the pieces that I carry are actually reproductions based on pre-colonial jewelry pieces mm -hmm. and they so are the made in-house are... are based on um, actual pre-colonial jewelry pieces but they what I sell are reproductions and are made in-house by my workers mm -hmm. These are examples of um, reproductions of pre-colonial jewelry. So this was an actual design that Filipinas it's, wore before. Yes, correct. So the way they would wear it, actually, it's without this top. So mm. they put this through the ear. Uh, but so, you made it yes, easier. Correct. To be able that's to wear why I guess they had big yes, holes. Correct. So that goes through the ear. And so it's worn actually this way. Mm. So I put a frame so that, so now it faces um, forward. This way. Correct. Rather than that, it yes. Passes. And this bangle is also based on pre-colonial jewelry. Mm -hmm. Look at that. So it's okay. a reproduction. They get it from the rivers, yeah. right? They just pan. And so it was pure. So yes. It was so it's very usually thin. twenty-two carat, uh -huh. twenty-four carat, and sometimes it's not always like when perfect. You, sometimes even when you test certain parts, like some come out because they just mix it. Um, mm -hmm. sila lang like pa. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, they so it's not always all for example 24 mm -hmm. but it's usually high carat mm -hmm. because they they, they would, just unearth this correct, on their rivers correct but this one this repro you you're you're selling is made of this what? one is made in silver okay. and then dipped in gold mm -hmm. now let's yes. look at the phone mm -hmm. the books written by ramon villegas your mm -hmm. mentor yes Ayano. so it's so the, really tracing correct. the beginnings of Philippine jewelry. Correct. So this was actually the f this was earlier. This is what you showed us, no, kanina. Correct. Something yes. Something like this. So the earrings that I showed earlier are reproductions of these pieces. So, ayan. Yes, yeah. that's right. So, so this is another. Ganun, no? Correct. Yes, they put that through the mm -hmm. ear hole. This one also is another. It Example. shows the sophistication of the early Filipinos. Yes. So the one that I showed you earlier is based on this mm -hmm. earring. So these are photographs of actual, actual and antique. Jewelry. Yes, yes. Yeah. So this one is. So the and dates are all And what you're offering is. Women of today can actually celebrate our past yes, by correct. Uh, using reproductions of Correct. This. Yeah. Imagine, ah, it looks so modern. Yes, right? It's like a superwoman cup. So this is... My God, right? 500 to 1000 yeah. <laughs> AD. Yeah. That yes. old. Mm -hmm. And then you can wear something like this, the, a reproduction. Yes, yes. But I love it because it looks so modern. Um, it's the simplicity, eh, no? Yes. And if ever may adornment, it's hindi siya over. Yes, eh. I agree. Hindi siya... like I that, agree. Oh. I agree. No. May movement. Yes. 
Diba? So beautiful. What made you go into that? Is there did you detect did you see a market for it or it was because you were simply interested? Uh, I, yes, because I've always liked um, antique jewelry, uh, Filipino jewelry, and also um, even English, French, mm -hmm. and uh, vintage and antique pieces. So I felt that there was this, um, when I started, I felt that there was a gap in the market um, for pieces that had, I mean, they're beautiful pieces, and that they, if, if you look at our books, you'll see photos of how they were worn before, right? But, and so, and I think they're beautiful uh, to wear even now. They look so modern, actually. Mm -hmm. You can wear them today, and they look so modern. So I felt that, you know, we had that gap, and it's nice to wear something Filipino, but it's so bold, and mm -hmm. it's, uh, but when you see it, actually, it looks like it could be something that was made today very modern in terms of the design. Mm. So I felt there was a gap in, in terms of like products being offered and I didn't see that around and mm. I really, really liked it. So, uh, and also because my mentor, Ramon Villegas, that was his specialty. So I was exposed to it through him and uh, I worked with him until his death in 2017. So even after that, I carried on and continued um, selling these pieces, which mm -hmm. are, yes, reproductions based on pre-colonial jewelry. Mm -hmm. And imagine um, those designs exist, and of course, there's a limited number of the real ones that Correct. Yes. existed. Yes, yes, so yes. You're wearing something that existed in the past, something like that. Yes, based on something that, yes, that's correct. So it's, um, they are reproductions of things that um, existed in the past, which you will see in books, literature, mm -hmm. on the subject. And um, yes, they, they were, I don't know how many pieces, uh, yeah. yes, are in Exist. existence today, yeah, right? Yes. And imagine it showcases the Highly skilled yes. of the Filipino Correct. before the Spanish game. Correct, yes. And when they actually didn't have, they had simple tools and they really used their hands to make these pieces. So when you see how, I mean, it's really, the craftsmanship is amazing. So you see how rich and how um, the Filipinos before the mm -hmm. Spanish colonial period, um, how highly skilled they were actually. Mm -hmm. Now, Erica, what advice would you give? Because you started, well, from a from Tupperware part. Yes, <laughs> that's correct. Yes. Um, who want to start a small enterprise like you, and then it grew to this. Yes. So I think it's really about finding what you're passionate about, and staying true to that. And um, once you find that passion, you really this you have to make that. Um, you have to make sure that whatever it is that you do, you do it well. Mm -hmm. And then it's all about also the customer, right? So if you want to turn it into a business, your passion into a business, uh, you, you really have to learn how to listen to your customers, to connect with them, mm -hmm. and to hear their feedback. Be willing to hear their feedback, be open to it, and really understand them. Ever since I was young, I've always, I, I guess I'm an old soul. So I've always, in terms of music, in terms of even my taste in um, things, fashion, I've always liked 1950s, I've always liked vintage. Uh, so even in my jewelry, that's why I carry a range of vintage estate jewelry because they were pieces that I wanted to wear really. Mm -hmm. So I would bring and I would carry pieces that I my, uh, my personal taste, really. So you go to estate sales? Do you? So uh, I do have, I have already partners abroad. I've made friends with dealers, yes, uh, internationally. So they help me source for certain things or I tell them what I like. Uh, so that helps. But I also buy from local collectors or from estates here locally. So from both. So it's interesting, like a treasure Hunt, in a yes, way, no? yes, yes. Because you never know actually what, you know, you, you can see one beautiful thing today and that's, you see it that time and you never see it again, yes. right? Which brings me to my question, how did you turn an interest, a hobby, into, you know, a business that I'm sure you started small, maybe yes. one or two pieces long and look at this. Yes. Such a beautiful... Well, it's still a very, it's a very quaint uh, shop. Ramon Villegas was the one who encouraged me to sell, it started, you know, when people, I would uh, acquire pieces from him, 
and my friends would see it and then they loved it and mm -hmm. so I would bring them to Ramon okay. and I would say oh like I introduced him to to many of my friends yeah. and I would also give my input on design so if mm -hmm. I wanted something made I would tell him let's do this mm -hmm. this like direction mm -hmm. and he said you know why don't you try uh, a Tupperware party yes so selling to family and friends and it worked I was invited to join trunk shows or the fairs like Ma Arte Fair. That and was your very first ba? Ma Arte Fair. Yes, when it because now it's Ma Arte yeah. and Artefino, but yeah. back then there was only one, right? Yeah. It was just Ma Arte. Any characteristic that you kind of inherited from this awesome grand great grandmother? Great grandmother. Here is where I meet with my clients. Uh, I usually have we we have food, we have breakfast, lunch, merienda, or dinner. And then we catch up and we talk about designs they want to have made. This is retro. It brings you back in Correct, time. Correct, right? So this is also retro. This one? Yes. So these are retro. These... Jack Stone. Yes. <laughs> This one too, it looks like the tracks because a lot of the bracelets they made during the time. If you look at a photo of the army tanks, uh, there. so they're called like, I mean, a lot of them are the tank bracelets. Oh. So those are 1940s. This one is citrine, the November birthstone. Beautiful. So yes, retro also. November, perfect. You inherited some pieces yes. from your great grandmother. Yes, that's correct. Mm -hmm. So tell us um, about her. She was an amazing. She was a very strong woman, uh, very nationalistic. So she wore a terno actually every day. And of course, she was also a known philanthropist. Yes. Yeah. So she founded White Cross, mm -hmm. which is an orphanage uh, that. Uh, so they take in children as young uh, newborns mm -hmm. um, and help them find homes. Mm -hmm. So that was her, uh, she mm -hmm. founded that. So let's see the book about your Lola who actually also got you started, about. Correct, uh -oh. yes, yes. So, so this, this was her. written by, um, this was written by my grand aunt. Look this is, at that there, no. This is Victoria Lopez de Araneta. Mm -hmm. So she's a uh, Lopez and then married Araneta. Mm -hmm. So she's my great grandmother. This Later is on, when there was a panuelo. Correct. Tayo, no? Yes, correct. That's correct. Oh, look at the jewelry. Minana mo ba yan? <laughs> <laughs> Any characteristic that you kind of inherited from this awesome grand, great grandmother? Great grandmother. It would be uh, she's very strong willed mm -hmm. and very purpose driven. So when she sets her mind out to do something, she really wants to do it well. Mm -hmm. uh, to the point, you know, very, um, with all the details. Mm -hmm. We can see it in the story. <laughs> it's very, uh, you can see the meticulous attention mm -hmm. that you gave to fixing the pieces. So, yeah, I would agree. <laughs> <laughs> you know, your your grandfather is also uh, very famous, very yes, well yes. known. Yes, yes. Also known for his philanthropy because, well, Namfrel yes, was, yes. Uh, was that very Yes, that was what active. he, yes, that's correct, mm -hmm. that's correct. So he was the one who founded uh, Namfrel. Mm -hmm. He's very hardworking yeah. too, very much so. So he's um, an extreme workaholic. Uh, like in our ha in his house, we, we used, all used to live together actually. So uh -huh. we lived in the same house. That so I saw him growing up. Mm -hmm. He really had. They would call it. He was like his paperwork. There were piles and piles. It was like planting rice. <laughs> the moment he would wake up, he would wake up early. He mm -hmm. would be working na, and then till late at night. He was very, also the same, I mean very, very uh, driven, driven, very yeah. driven and very goal oriented. Mm -hmm. uh, so I never, like my memory of him growing up was really always constantly working. How was it like though growing up, you, you said you grew up in the house where? Yes, so with my grandparents. All and of my you? Aunt. It must have been a riot. Yes, super fun. So <laughs> always like family meals were so many. We're all complete. Oh, really? But she's the I remember in an interview with Joey, mm -hmm. he said that Joe Kwan was very kuripot 
<laughs> to date, they would have to. That's why though he sold popcorn or something. Anyway, or sell old clothes or something. He's what, very... Was it true that parang they taught you the value of money? Yes, that's true. I mean, but he knew, he knew, he understood the value of money. So he was not wasteful. He was not extravagant. Mm -hmm. He was not... Um, He's very, he was very mindful of what he would spend his money on. So he encouraged all of us to, even at a young age, to start a business. So even like, even selling, you know, like when you're seven years old, I was seven years old, you're selling, I was selling like friendship bracelets, yung mga ganyan. At seven years old. At seven, eight, or like well, I'd make my own stuff toys. <laughs> You would make your own stuff. Toys. Yes, yes, stuff toys. I mean, it was just, I guess, the atmosphere of the family. It was a very, very entrepreneurial. entrepreneurial. Yes, that's correct. So even my aunt, she, uh, of course, there was the business which was RFM. Yeah. But on each, like each of us, on our own, we had our own little, little business. Yes, going on. Well, any um, traits, naman, that you got from your father from or my father. mother? Yes. Uh, what, what well, from my father, he's very passionate. So when he, same thing, when he gets into something, he really puts his all into it. Ah, that's a conception. I think so. To the point that parang sometimes it's like uh, over, yes, like OC, OC already, yes. Uh, very passionate. Very, yes, yes. Um, and like workaholic. I mean, to a certain extent, like when I look at all my, my aunts and uncles, all of them, like they like to be working, busy. You busy. don't like to be idle. Yeah. Yes, no. You don't like to be a woman of leisure. Yes, no, no, no. I mean, but ideally I do, but then when, <laughs> I, when I'm par idle, I'm not happy. I'm not, you know, I don't feel productive. I, I think I like having goals mm -hmm. and working to reach those mm -hmm. goals. Give us an idea of the price, like um, of the price range of vintage jewelry. For me because like um, some people have been suggesting to me to expand and open a shop and open meaning in a in a in, in a, a mall commercial or a commercial area. area but I'm happy with this setup because I get to control my own time also mm -hmm. I get to manage my own time and I get to meet clients and talk to each one mm -hmm. so it's a more personal it's like a more personal touch what do they look for in a piece of jewelry yes so it's really special and unique pieces that they can only find uh, from me or mm. from that, that they cannot find elsewhere mm. and things that are made well in terms of the craftsmanship. So you must have dealt with all sorts of personalities. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> but it's always such a joy. I, I love meeting new people mm -hmm. and reconnecting with old uh, clients as well. That, I, that's the part I enjoy actually oh. about Yes. The interaction. No? The interaction. Yeah. And in the trunk shows, I get to meet um, and meet new clients, new friends who eventually became friends. Mm -hmm. So it's a wonderful way to, he to hear to hear feedback also. Ah, yeah. Yes. So are there some who come that like, money is not an object? Actually, or everybody. <laughs> You know, everybody's, you know, we're all conscious about the cost of, of, of things and you want to feel that your money is going towards something. When you spend, mm -hmm. you want to know that you're getting your money's worth. Mm -hmm. So, um, and I like meeting people actually uh, like that because who value and who know. Yeah, I find that it's actually easier to, to deal with people who know the value of money and um, I, don't, I don't think it's offensive at all. My most precious jewelry pieces are actually things that tell a story mm. and that have like these charms they're Beautiful. each unique they're, they're in their own way yes and, or siguro significant yes times in your life yes yeah. exactly exactly so okay what happened when you had this <laughs> <laughs> so these are actually things i've collected 
uh, during my travels. It doesn't have to cost like yes, exactly. millions and millions yes. of pesos yes. to be precious, valuable. Yes. Give us an idea of the price, like um, of the price range of vintage jewelry. The like twenty thousand lang. Yes, like tamar if it's in silver. So modest yes, amount yes, can yes, get yes. you started yes, yes. collecting. Yes, yes. And then the value goes up as time passes. Well, with anything that can, for as long as it's something that they can't really make anymore in the same with the same quality mm -hmm. and with the same workmanship and that, that's my belief. Mm -hmm. Anything that uh, is difficult to replicate, or if they tried to, the cost would probably be more. How do you close the deal? What tips can you what can you give? Well, fortunately, um, that so that works both ways because also uh, since I deal with a lot of vintage and antique pieces, estate pieces, uh, because it really is just one of its there's only one of that style or that design so it can also work in a way i mean well in a way because the client knows that if they pass on it um it they it's may not get it to her yes yes so it can work um ah, yes so you yes them, well this is the last yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes 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 you don't get it yes you might rig if yes. you don't correct Correct. Might regret. Yes, yes, because there are some pieces that uh, many pieces actually that um, I've parted with, uh, that I've sold, and I've never come across them again. Even in the, I'm always on the lookout. I'm always um, in. Con I'm connected to a lot of dealers, uh, both locally and foreign, and um, so I see the the range of things that that they have. And there are many pieces that came across my came my way. I parted with and thinking I would be able to find one again or similar and I have not been able to. Since this is a business and a passion at the same time, does it break your heart to part Yes, with yes, so many times, so many times. It How really do is. How you handle that? You know, uh, it was more difficult in the beginning, uh, but there are times that uh, it is quite difficult because I know there are some pieces I actually know Chances are I will not come across again. But I always remember this is a business. I cannot keep everything. So that's one thing that I've learned. So Don't be greedy. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes, yes. Because otherwise, yes, then it defeats the whole purpose of, of, um, the, of me starting this as a business, yeah. right? Yeah. Yes, so it's really that. But it, but it is true because there, are, there have been many times that I have, um, it was very painful actually to part with some pieces. <laughs> Yes, but then when I see the client and it makes her so happy, you know, I'm happy that it's going to a good home or to a good uh, collection. And then I see them wear it and then I see, you know, it brings them so much joy. Some they wear it daily. So when I see that, it's like, oh, okay, it, it, it's being loved. It's being appreciated and, and worn, which is the important thing. I, I, I think jewelry should always be worn, right? It should bring you joy, right? So the pieces that we choose to wear, it should make you feel happy, right? It's like it puts you, I mean, it depends on your mood, the things that you choose to wear. So I'm happy when I see others, uh, the clients. Gives you that extra confidence. Yes, yeah. correct, yes, yeah. yes. For women, man, what's appropriate to wear during the day na jewelry? Is there, it's a, are there rules, but are, are they made to be you, broken? You know, for me, it's your personal style. You know, jewelry is a chance to express, you know, your personal style, your personal taste. So I think, you know, wear whatever you feel beautiful and you're comfortable in, diba? So that's really my, with jewelry, that's my philosophy. Erika Concepcion Reyes is now reaping much deserved recognition and success and is certainly a secret no more. Through her carefully crafted collections and restored heirloom gems, she is reminding us of the value of embracing and honoring our heritage by learning from our past while living our present with grit and grace. And just like her heirloom pieces, May we all have rich lives with interesting stories to tell. I'm Cesc Orenia Drilon. See you again next Monday 
here on Usapang Bilyonaryo.